What a crowd! What a night! Whoa! Get ready for the best of Austin, Texas' favorite brothers. Step one recording stars, the Giesenslaw Brothers. Now here's country music's leading voice, Ralph Emery. Hi, everybody. On these walls in my office are the memories of many happy times in show business. But my fondest memory is of a night when I brought this comedy team in from Texas. The funniest comedy team I've ever met. And I've been a fan of these guys for years. They used to be on the Arthur Godfrey show. They were with Arthur Godfrey for nine years, and in more recent times they worked as the opening act for Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard. And they're two of the funniest people I ever met. Would you welcome... Sam and son, the Giesenslaw brothers. Here they are. Our name ain't Giesenslaw and we ain't brothers, but uh, <laughs> the lady uh, live next door. Am I talking too loud? No, you're fine. We do a lot of jobs, don't have electricity, and I get a little carried <laughs> So uh, it's when son was just a kid, but his lady lived next door, and... Uh, she knew some people named Geese and Slaw, and uh, we thought it sounded funny. Hadn't worked out that way necessarily. Sammy, 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 and son, I'm really glad to have you here at the office, but... Uh, Boy, it's good to be here, Ralph. Thanks for letting us come by. Son looks a little tired. Son is a little tired. Thanks to you, we've been on the Geese and Slaw World Tour since, what, 1986. Son is nearly <laughs> wore out, I'd say. Oh, is the, the World Tour still going on? Still going strong, Ralph, and I, I believe it may be kind of growing as it goes. Is it true you've been on some kind of world tour? The world, the Geese and Slaw Brothers uh, 1987 world tour is going strong. It's grueling, but you know we're holding up to it. <laughs> we're booked solid right now up through March 13th of I, this year. I see. <laughs> oh, the Geese and Slaw 91 world tour pressing forward, Ralph. <laughs> we're going over 30 miles from home. <laughs> the 1989 world tour, Ralph, in April alone will cover over 200 miles. <laughs> Although show business is my life, I just can't prove it. Hey! <laughs> what a crowd tonight! Yo! Yeah! Woo! Perfect flag. We're on the we're on the 89 World Tour. God bless America League, I'll tell you. The 1991 World Tour's going great. Is it? This month alone, we have covered over 143 miles. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> we just got back from uh, Louisiana, went on our fourth annual Mardi Gras tour down New Orleans. We arrive Fat Tuesday, stay over Ash Wednesday, then we do kind of a combo they call Fat Ash Thursday. You remember that one? Yeah. Yes. Fat Ash Thursday, all right, thank you yeah, very much. Geese and Slaw shoot. World Tour went international. Looky there, Strawberry Point, Iowa we covered. Yeah. There's the Strawberry. Is that where the tour opened? Is that where now the tour opened? this is in the Strawberry, this is the Franklin Hotel, Roger. Yeah. All 12 rooms sold clean out. This is the lineup for the first opening night of the tour, isn't, it? isn't that the line outside? No. Oh, yeah, that's Those that's just people. part of the crowd was it there. Yeah. We, now, here's a vendor bait machine. You learn things when you're out on the world tour. You get leeches, worms, and minners in a machine. You ever seen that? No. Oh, I'm it looking a at wonderful it. thing. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, and then you wonder, what do superstars do in their spare time? I milk a lot when I'm on. <laughs> yeah. And here's a picture of son. It has no relevance to the tour, but he just <laughs> wanted his picture in there. You know what I mean? Oh, and there this, you now are. this, we went all the way up to Prairie Duchesne, Wisconsin. This is Eunice's Liquor and Cheese Store. Yeah. And uh, y'all from Prairie Duchesne? You ever been to Eunice's Liquor and Cheese Store? You see the sign over there, little sign? I thought it was an extra special service. It says, we will cut the cheese for you. Ah, yes, Eunice, <laughs> we'll cut the cheese for you. Yeah, the world tour is grueling, but we like it. Especially we come to the Nashville area, and thanks to you putting us up in some fine accommodations, keeping us away from them big old expensive places with air conditioners blowing and all that. And you know, son thinks that the bars on the window there at the Venus de Milo Arms kind of adds, I think, to the decor of the place. Makes it quaint. <laughs> sure. Thanks for getting us our accommodations again over to Venus de Milo Arms. <laughs> ah, what a hotel! 
You like it over there? It's a nice place, but a rough neighborhood. Oh. Yeah. Some kids was having a track meet today out in the parking lot, and they started the 100-yard dash with a burglar alarm. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Started the 100-yard dash with a burglar alarm. <laughs> and we were going to thank you, of course, for fixing us up once again at the beautiful Venus de Milo Arms Hotel. They got a bowling alley over there now. <laughs> really? Yeah. One lane bowling alley. And they lost two pins. Yeah. <laughs> Highest score you can possibly get is 208. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get a strike, ain't but seven points. But it's nice. So any of y'all staying at the Opryland Hotel? Yeah. Where are y'all staying? Well, I'll ask you individually here at the break. We're staying over there. Son, son loves it, but he said one thing got him. The towels is too thick. That it makes it too hard to close his suitcase. <laughs> hey. close suitcase. Sammy, how's your hotel? The Venus de Milo Arms, thanks. You fixed us up again. It's just as good as ever. Frank Sinatra Jr. impersonator still in the lounge. <laughs> 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 Son met Leona Helmsley there today. Oh, did he? Yeah. She got sentenced to six months at the Venus de Milo. <laughs> <laughs> it's doing pretty good. I heard son talking to his wife today on the phone. He said, no, 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 yes, no. And I said, what was the yes for? And he said, she asked me if I could hear her all right. <laughs> 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 Son selling the new Sun Geese and Slaw Doll. Didn't y'all buy one? <laughs> we were selling them out in the parking lot of the Opryland Hotel. Really? That's where we're staying. In the parking lot of the Opryland Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's what's the doll like? Oh, it's a it's a replica. You think it's a new image for Sun? The oh. hat. Look out, Garth Brooks. Here comes Sun. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Now the sun geese and slaw doll about this tall, looks just like sun, got a little hat on and a string in back with a little ring on it, and you zoop, pull the string out. What, what happens? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> thanks for the new dig. Oh, did, I, did nice. that work out for you all right? It's that Chinese, that oriental family type in over there, the, called the sweet and sour sweets. Real. <laughs> The sweet and sour sweets, all right. Hey, thank you very much. How is the hotel? It's great. It's a fine hotel. I, I notice, though, when you stay all night there, you get up the next day, an hour later, you're sleepy again. <laughs> hour later. <laughs> Venus to Milo, right there by the railroad track, yes. but it doesn't bother us that much. Sun was, uh, shall we get into that? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Ralph got a mischievous look on his face. A lady come up to Son. Son's out looking for the soda water machine, you know. He said, I'm going to call the manager. I can't find the Coca-Cola machine. A lady said, good luck on calling the manager. There ain't no Coca-Cola machine and there ain't no phone to call the manager on if you wanted to. Well, Son said, I'll be darned. And she said, plus that. Said, see that railroad track? And Son said, yes. She said, when the train comes by, it jars you so much, it'll jar you completely out of bed, right down into the floor. And Son said, I doubt that. You know? He said, I know the track is close. You can see the old track right there by the window. He said, I know it's close. It's probably real loud, but I don't believe it'll jar you completely out of bed onto the floor. And she said, I tell you what, train will be by in about five minutes. I'll show you. He said, lay down here on the bed. So he laid down there. <laughs> and she laid down beside him. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it about that time the door bust open? Here's this lady's old man. He comes in and said, what are you doing laying in bed with my wife? And son said, would you believe waiting for a train? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> cheap, cheap bug Ralph, you have fixed us up with some fine accommodations. Well, Appreciate it. Sammy, a man with your taste, I knew that you and uh, you and son would enjoy the Venus de Milo arm. Oh, and the sweet and sour sweets. I'll tell you, it's great. <laughs> One thing I've always enjoyed is how you keep me abreast of the news, Sammy. Well, we try to stay current. You know, son doesn't talk that much, but he reads a lot. Keeps me informed. He does a talk show there at home covering all these Oh, subjects. he does. Oh, it's a great talk show. The callers get plenty of time. <laughs> but looky here. You have any news from Texas tonight? Oh, gosh, everybody's going broke in Texas. You know, we're having a depression, which don't bother me and son none. We went broke during the boom. Hey. <laughs> <we're> <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of enjoying it. <laughs> you know the um, what a Texas all man and a pigeon has in common now? What's that? A pigeon can still make a deposit on a Mercedes. <laughs> hey! Since <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were last here, they, they passed the lottery law down in Texas? They passed the lottery this past Tuesday. Did they? Yep. Uh, we'll all probably, you know, be getting rich now. Nothing to win in the lottery, I don't think. I heard a guy won the lottery, called his wife, said, Darling, I just won $11 million in the lottery. Start packing. And she said, Ooh, should I pack my bikini? We're going to Florida. Or my fur coat for Denver. He said, I don't care what you pack. Just so you're out of there when I get home. <laughs> hey, out of there. What a crowd. Whoa. And how about them Dallas Cowboys? Yes. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. boy. <laughs> Some guy from Arkansas bought the Dallas Cowboys, kicked Coach Landry out. Got some college guy coaching them now. I think they're now going to buy into the 7-Eleven grocery change. Yeah. <laughs> going to call the team 0-11. Oh, hey. 0-11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <and> <laughs> Then I hear, uh, they say Jimmy Hoffa's buried in the end zone in the Giant Stadium. Yeah. So, hey, we could have laid him out in the open in the Dallas end zone. Nobody would have seen him there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then the old football strike upset son a lot. He's an athletic supporter, as you know, and he was disappointed <laughs> during the strike. <laughs> the... <laughs> <laughs> Part of the um, Dallas Cowboys went back to college during the strike. Oh, did they? Yes, yeah, said at least keep in spending money. You know, <laughs> <a> new car. <laughs> now, things are so bad in Texas, two Korean orphans adopted a savings and loan last week. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, down in Texas, they've got the, the big Republican convention going on in your part of the country, haven't they? The, the Republicans are in Houston having their convention. Big thing, big thing down there, you know. Son told me earlier that Dan Quayle didn't know how to spell potato. I asked him what's wrong. He said, I think he left the R out. <laughs> 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 Said, I think he left the R out. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Son was a little early, though. Uh, earlier on, Son got him one of them H. Ross Perot for President wristwatch. You show him, Son. Yeah. The watch is still running. Is it? Nah. Hey. You <laughs> <laughs> say the Democrats are looking for somebody to run for president, and they keep complaining this past week of Mr. Sununu flying around in the government planes, you know. They say, boy, last time a Democrat was president, everybody wasn't flying around in government planes. I said, no, last time a Democrat was president, they was using stagecoaches, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you, like? you were just asking about the big news in Texas, the governor's race, and the people always calling me, and they say, what happened to Ralph? I said, what do you mean? What happened to Ralph? I said, I don't know. What do you mean? He said, his mustache is gone. I said, I don't know, just wild guessing, I bet he shaved. What did happen? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but the queen came to Austin, didn't the she? The queen of England did come to Austin. Son called her up. Did said, he? can I speak to the queen? They said, she's on the throne. He said, well, I can understand. She don't want to come to the phone now, you know. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> the son's now in the business of selling Iraqi rifles. <laughs> yeah, get you a good deal. They've never been fired. 
<laughs> Only dropped once. Hey! <laughs> Only dropped once. There you go. What a crowd! Woo! What a night! Oh, chee chee bug. Uh, and that, Ralph, is the news. I love that. <laughs> What do you guys do in your spare time? I mean, when the world tour isn't going out everywhere. Spare time, you know what? Son watches uh, fishing on TV. And another one of his favorite hobbies is the aviary arts. What's that? Bird watching. Right? Oh. Bird watching. But you know, have you ever heard of a black-capped vireo? No. It's a bird that's becoming extinct. Have any of y'all ever heard of that? Some people have. It's mixed. It's mixed. But it's a bird that son had two or three of them black cap vireos on his belt. Deader than a doornail they were. Game warden come up, says, what in the world have you got on your belt there? Son said, I've been hunting. It's black cap vireos. The game warden said, do you know this bird is becoming extinct? There's hardly any of them left in the entire United States. Son said, I didn't know that. He opened a trunk on his car. There's about 40 more of them in the trunk. The game warden's about to have a heart attack. He says, where in the world did you get all these birds? And said, I've been hunting. I shot them. And the game warden said, if I ain't being too personal, what do you do with these black cap vireos? Son said, I eat them. The game warden said, what do they taste like? Son said, you know, to me, they taste a little bit like a cross between a bald eagle and a hooping crane. <laughs> uh, son actually made it through that part of grade school. You know, when um, he got in, he need, only needs three hours to get out of college. And somebody told him there at the University of Texas, where, you know, in Austin, where we come up from, they said there is a teacher teaches bird watching. And this guy loves your show. He watches us on here all the time. He loves son. Uh, said you could go over there and take his bird watching course. Get you the three hours is all he needed to finish college deal. And he said, I believe I'll do it. So, oh, good night, nurse. He had some albums and stuff. He showed up for class. Wouldn't you know it now, just a day before this guy got in a car wreck and couldn't make it. There's another guy teaching the class. Well, everybody walks in, and this guy says, Everybody sit down. Oh, my little, my, my little hidden microphone thing fell off. Yes. I'm wired. Hey, all right. Uh, <laughs> whoops. Where were we, Ralph? Uh, the, the, the substitute teacher walked in. This guy they had sent in from Harvard or somewhere, see. He says, Everybody sit down. We're having a test. Ooh, good night, nurse. Had a stack of pictures. Wasn't nothing on them pictures except bird legs. The legs of birds. So he said, what am I going to do? I'm going to hold up these pictures, these bird legs, and y'all got to write down the name of the bird. What kind of bird it is. Son said, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of in my life. I ain't taking that test. Teacher said, well, we'll just give you an F. He got his grade book out. Said, what's your name? Son pulled both of his breeches legs way up above his knees and said, you tell me. <laughs> hey, you. Well, a friend of ours, Dr. Charles Jarvis at home, told Son, maybe if you get a bird, because his wife and all, they had had that trouble, and he was in the bird store shopping for birds, and there's a oh, thousand birds in there. Everyone looked exactly alike. And it's all $4.95. Because they had a little tag on their legs. And son's looking at all the birds. He noticed one kind of back in the corner. $136.50. Whoa, chee chee bug, he said to the clerk. <laughs> Why? <laughs> son said, I notice all these birds look exactly alike. They're all $4.95, except this one kind in the back, $136.50. What's the difference? Clerk said, Hi, pretty sharp. He said, you noticed that? It didn't take you long. He said, the reason this is 136.50 because he not only sings, but he talks too. <laughs> Son said, I'll take him or wrap him up. Took him home, come back the next morning. Son said, the bird did not talk. Didn't sing, he didn't talk. The clerk said, did he peck on his little bell? Son said, a little bell? 
said, yeah, he pecks on his little bell. said, you watch TV, don't you? Listen to the stereo. The bird like peck on his little bell, make a little music, and he starts talking. Son said, how much your little bell? Says six dollars. Said, I'll take a little bell. So he went home, come back the next morning, said, my bird didn't talk yet. He pecked on his little bell, but he did not talk. Said, did he climb up his little ladder? <laughs> <laughs> Son said, I didn't get a little ladder. How much are little ladders? The clerk said, they're $22. <laughs> said, you jog, you exercise. Little bird like to run up and down his little ladder, peck his little bell. Then he'll talk. Went home, come back the next morning. Said, my bird didn't sing, and he didn't talk. The clerk said, did he look in his little mirror? <laughs> Son said, you telling me I need a mirror? And this clerk said, no, you, don't, you got a mirror. Your little bird probably needs a mirror. You know what? Said he peck his little bell. He run up and down his little ladder. He look in his little mirror. He thinks it's another bird. He starts talking. Said, I'll take the mirror. <laughs> Son come back the next morning and said, my bird didn't talk. My bird didn't sing. My bird had not said a word. Pecked his little bell, run up and down his little ladder, looked in his little mirror, he did not talk. Said, did he swing on his little sway? <laughs> <laughs> little swing? How much are little swings? He said, $29. He said, I'll take one. <laughs> he come back the next morning and he said, my bird's dead. <laughs> Your bird died. Son said, I believe I know a dead bird. He's on his back. His feet's up in the air. He's dead. The guy said, well, what in the world happened? Son said, well, went in this morning, took the cover off the cage. He pecked on his little bale. He climbed about halfway up his little ladder. He looked over at me, and son said, I think he smiled. He looked in his little mirror, and he jumped on his little swing, and right before he toppled over, he said, don't they sell bird seed? <laughs> <laughs> Don't they sell bird seed? Excuse me, I kind of like that one. That's, myself, a, right? that's, that's one of your best jokes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, they've seen all the comedy, Sammy, but I think folks should know that there's another dimension to the Geese and Slaw Brothers. They sing. Ooh, an opportunity here to shamelessly plug our albums, I hope. On Step One Records, our first one was uh, called The Geese and Slaws, then the World Tour album, and uh, now the uh, Feeling Good, Getting Up, Getting Down, which help I'm white and I can't get down his own. And also this song that Son likes a lot. That's one of your favorites, isn't it, Bubba? He says it is. It's called I Took Her to the Station, I Didn't Kiss Her By, But I Kissed the Bus for Hauling Her Away. Some things worse than this. 
living here with me. Last Christmas I gave her a ticket home to mama. She kept threatening and to use it, and she finally did today. When I took her to the station, I didn't kiss her bye, but I kissed the bus for hauling her away. When I took her to the station, didn't kiss her bye, but a kiss of us are all in her way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> a smattering of applause oh, for yeah. the song. Thank you very much. Oh, God, you don't want to get a little nostalgic singing the old bus song, especially about Sun. You know how Sun has progressed since we've been with you since 86, Ralph? Remember at first he was a little insecure. He was always looking for part-time jobs. He's had what, what I'd call, what, identity crisis? And boy, luck with the women hasn't been the greatest with Sun. Well, that's too bad, Sammy. How's he doing now? You know what, Ralph? Let's take a trip down the Sun Geesin' Slaw memory lane. What, uh, what, kind of, <laughs> what kind of job has Sun got? Well, you recall last year I was telling you Sun had this job selling no soliciting signs door to door. Got no work. <laughs> Nearly put himself out of business. Then he got to selling hearing aids door to door, and that didn't work out. It seemed like everybody that needed him didn't know he was there. You know what I mean. <laughs> then he's driving a taxi for a while over here at the Opryland Hotel. He's, he's in the front line. His couple comes up. He said, take the next cab, please. Happens again. He said, take the next cab. The bell captain come over and said, why don't you pick somebody up? Son said, yeah, I'll lose my place in line. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Son's doing good. He had him a part-time job in a chicken processing plant. Really? Ooh, a chicken processing. I said, son. He said, won't you go with me? I'll show you where it work. I said, I can't, I can't stand it. He said, well, it's bad. If you walk through backwards, it looks like they're building chickens. Okay? <laughs> <You know? laughs> son, son didn't have nothing to do when I was laid up. He, he was, uh, got him a part-time job. He was with one of the major oil firms there for a while. Really? Yeah. Then he got laid off. They went self-service. <laughs> <laughs> Son is so proud of his new Halloween costume and his new Porter Wagner shirt. You know, Son didn't have any clothes till he was seven years old. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that's right. His parents bought him a little cap, just set him by the window. He could watch people as they go by. <laughs> I see Son is sporting the uh, the Garth Brooks look. Son's going pop. Yeah, he's got the Garth Brooks microphone and a uh, little special thing I brought, Son. Ah, there you go. All right. Think it'll fly? Hey, I think he looks terrific. Son, he does. He's gone pop. I'll tell you, ain't no stopping him now. His uh, stum son's stomach's a little upset. Oh? Had a dove bar before he came over here. Soap, not the ice cream. Yeah, I see. <laughs> so, what a crowd! What a night! Whoa! In fact, son read in a poll that an unknown Democrat could win the election. He may be running. What do you think? Say, hey, looks better. Hey, you don't know. Sammy, why why is son wearing the dark glasses? It's the eclipse, Ralph. <laughs> Son saw on TV that said if you don't wear them welding glasses, you'll go blind. <laughs> so, uh, you think it'd be all right if he slipped them off now? I think, yeah, it's, yeah. I think it occurred it's at 1.30 this afternoon. So he said, what is an eclipse? They said, well, the, the sun goes away and it gets dark. And he said, we have him at home every night. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Texas has a lottery now. Son won the lottery, $14 million. He went down there and he said, hey, I want, I want my 14 million. And they said, well, you don't get it all at once. They pay you out in 20 years. Son said, heck with that. I want my dollar back. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time, I believe in our, this is going on six years. Son had something he wanted to say tonight. What was it, son? You know what son's been excited about? Well, t 
today and yesterday the spelling bee that's been going on. There's a girl from Nashville here come in. Yeah. Uh, Julia Lemons, I believe. Y'all spelling bee fans? Of course, what turned sun on? <laughs> <laughs> what really gets sun's juices to flowing is that televised fishing program they have on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Last Saturday, I said, you want to watch the Celtics play Detroit Pistons? And he said, don't you touch that TV. Bobby Bear's fixing to bait his hook. <laughs> His son was doing the good weather playing golf today. Oh, really? Him and a friend of his, yeah. Two ladies up ahead of him playing golf. Slow. Beating around. How y'all tonight, audience? What a crowd. What a night. Oh, God. Hey. Oh. What a crowd. I do not do that for cheap applause. Yes, you do I too. do not. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, these ladies are playing slow and sun, and this guy said, boy, I wish they'd hurry up. Well, the son playing, the guy playing golf with son said, I think I'll walk up there and tell them to hurry up. So he got about halfway to them, and he turned around and come back. And he says to son, I can't hurry these ladies up. And son said, why not? He said, because one of them is my wife, and the other one is my mistress. Ooh. Well, son said, let me go hurry them up. So son went up there and he got there about halfway and he turned around and come back and said to the guy, small world. <laughs> son went to the doctor, he said, doctor, I'm invisible. And the nurse said, the doctor can't see you now. <laughs> hey. But the most exciting thing, exciting thing happened to son when he was three years old, he swallowed a bullet. And her mother called the doctor, said, what can I do? My kid swallowed a bullet. The doctor said, give him a mild laxative. Don't aim him at anybody. <laughs> right. Son went to Greece. So did you know that for a vacation? No, I didn't know. I didn't. Son had been there for how about three days. And the tour guide said, you know, uh, son, you've been in Athens three days. You haven't been to the Acropolis. And son said, I know. I think it must be the water. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> son is trying to get in a little better mood. Son, did I tell you a girl called son today? No. Son answered the phone. Girl says to son, you got any candles there at the house? Son said, yes, I do. She said, Why? She said, well, I want you to put a fire in the fireplace, dim them lights, light those candles. I'm going to bring some champagne over, and we can have a real romantic evening. Woo! Son said, sounds good to me. And she said, okay, George, I'll be there in about 30 minutes. And he said, my name ain't George. And she said, oh, good night, nurse. I got the wrong number. And son says, does this mean you're not coming over? <laughs> now, Greg, Greg said, I would like to have a stare off with son. And Greg, I don't have time enough for a stare off, but we'll try a mini stare off. I want you to go up and sit down next to Son. And, and, uh. Come on down. And, uh, you can take, you can take, uh, the seat right next to Son. And you can start your stare off there. And we'll pick you up at the end of this segment to see if it's still going on. Now, as I, 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 I would think in a stare off, you can't smile, all right? And I want you to know. Sammy, I can see how son's had a lot of bad luck with the women, and that's, well, that's got to be stressful. How's his health? Well, son's health is pretty good. He hates to go to the doctor, but if the need arises, he will go to the doctor's office. <laughs> but son went to the doctor to get a wart taken off his finger. How much time we got? I'll go right ahead. Well, that's a fact. <laughs> son hates to go to the doctor anyway. Because you know every time you go to the doctor, they want you to take your clothes off. He had a wart on his finger. 
He walks in, you know, and you know how grouchy doctors receptionists are anyway. Oh, they, well, they know they got you sick anyway. Right? He said, I got this wart. She said, take your clothes off. He said, I just got a wart on my face. She said, take your clothes off. She said, see them bottles on that shelf? Fill one up. He said, from here? She said, take your clothes off. <laughs> Get it, I got <laughs> Oh, she said. Now, psychiatrists, receptionists, are not that grouchy. You notice that. You go to psychiatrists, every receptionist treats you nice. They don't know what you're in there for, you know. <laughs> Jump over the desk and get them. So he said, I was just wanting to get this wart taken off my finger. And <laughs> they laid him out. And it, when he was in the doctor's office, the worst thing is, when he was walking in, a guy was walking out and dropped dead. And son says to the nurse, what should we do? A guy was leaving the office, dropped dead. The nurse said, turn him around, make it look like he was coming in. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, oh, <laughs> so we got time for the little lady that came in? Yes. Oh, when son was in there, try, he stripped off by now in another room with a wart on his finger, and this little lady come in the doctor's office. She is about this tall. How tall? This tall, oh. Ralph. I'm not exaggerating. And uh, she said, Doctor, I don't know what it is, but every time it rains, I get a terrible hurting right down in this area of my body. Well, the doctor said, let me see, and he picked her up and put her on the table there, and he said, I don't see anything wrong. And she said, it ain't raining. And <laughs> He said, well, I tell you what you do, ma'am. He said, the next time it rains, come in and I'll check it again. And boy, it wasn't long, a frog strangler came. Big rain come in, it was pouring down, and she come in and said, doctor, it's about to kill me today. He said, okay, let me take another look. And he helped her back up on the table. Oh, good night, nurse. He said, that is horrible. He said, nurse, hand me them scissors. And the nurse handed him the scissors, and the doctor clipped around a little bit, clip, 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 put her back down in the floor, said, how's that? She said, oh, doctor, it just feels great now. What did you do? And the doctor said, I cut three inches off the top of your galoshes. <laughs> To the, uh, what happened to the guy so, in the room with the wart? So son is walking in there. <laughs> son is walking in. He's stark naked. He walks in the room. There's a guy sitting there also without a stitch on. Got a little package in his lap. And uh, son said, is this the craziest place i ever been in in my life? Said, I come in to get a wart taken off my finger. They make me strip off all my clothes. The guy said, what are you talking about? I just come in to deliver this package. <laughs> Uh, Sammy, <laughs> yes, uh, let, sir. Me, let me see your hat. There oh, Ralph, second. you always tell people I keep stuff written in my hat, and you know I don't. You know, Sammy has been putting his act in his hat for 10 years. Little reminders of uh, the jokes, like the mushroom joke, uh, the haircut joke, and then the lady uh, hanging over the balcony in the Baptist church, and, uh, oh, the red rubber ball joke. Well, does son like us? Son loves you, I tell you. He's had a traumatic experience. Uh, he went out to his uncle's house in the country and uh, for supper, and that day earlier, his uncle had told his old lady, he said, what would be great to have, it was kind of a family reunion thing, if we could have some steak and mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And she went to town and bought some steak and didn't have enough money left for the mushrooms. And he said, hey, go out and pick some. Well, she said, you know, half the time them old mushrooms are poison. Well, he said, I'll go ahead and pick some up. She got them and cooked them up. They look great. But she said, just in case, I believe I'll feed a few of these to the dog. 
So she called old Spot in, put him a big old plate of them mushrooms down, and old Spot ate them, and she just started wagging his tail and running around, so she figured everything is all right. So the whole family had a big supper of a steak and mushrooms, and they sitting around after supper talking, and the guy that worked for him stuck his head in the window and said, Old Spot's dead. <laughs> Oh, Lord, they started screaming and moaning, called the ambulance. They took them all to the hospital, red lights going, sirens blaring, you know. They pumped their stomachs out, and the doctor said, I don't know if this will even do any good because you ate them so long before you got here. And they just went back home. They was laying around the house moaning and groaning. And they called the old hired hand in and said, Did old Spot suffer long? He said, no, a truck hit him, killed him just like that. <laughs> Boy, howdy. Has son been to Rome? How did you know? Well, I just heard a rumor. He was getting a haircut, uh, and the barber was saying, said, I hear you're going on vacation. Son said, that's right. The barber said, what airline are you going on? He said, I'm going on uh, World International Airline. Barber said, the worst airline in the world. Charged three times too much for tickets. Ain't got no service. Ugly stewardess. They take you 12 times. Worst airline in the world. He's cutting them around and said, where are you going to stay over there in Rome? Son said, the Excelsior Hotel. The worst hotel in the world, says the barber. They charge you double rates. Old dilapidated place. No, sir. They ain't even got cold water, much less the worst hotel in the world. Trimming up his hair, said, what you going to do in Rome when you get there? Son said, I'm going to go see the Pope. He's going to have a big, big outdoor mass. The worst thing in the world to do when you go to Rome. He said, you're going to be four miles back. There are going to be 900,000 people there. The Pope is going to look this big to you. So anyway, son left, and he got a month or two later, he saw the barber. The barber said, how was the trip? Son said, great. Said, how about that airline? Said, fine. Rates were cheap, service perfect. We got there that quick. Said, what about that Excelsior Hotel? Fine hotel. Fully remodeled, room service, 24 hours a day, rates dirt cheap. Well, he said, how did it go with the Pope? Son said, fine. Got seats on the front row. After the Pope did the Mass, he said, would you care to come back here with me? Son said, yes, I would. The son said, uh, Pope said to the son, uh, would you like for me to bless you? And son said, of course. So son kneeled down there, and the Pope put his hand on son's head and said, the worst haircut I have ever seen. <laughs> Whoa! So this guy's going to the baseball game, you see. He's walking in. And all of a sudden, from way up in the stands, somebody screams, Hey, Dave! Well, this guy stops and looks up, and everybody's behind him. There are thousands of people there, you know. They say, Hey, move it on, move it on. we got to get into the hardball game. They go on in there. He's looking around for his seat, and it happens again. Somebody from way in the top, Hey, Dave! And he stopped and looked around. They said, Well, you move on and hurry up. We're trying to find our seats too, you know. So darn if the guy didn't go to the concession stand, he buys about $40 worth of stuff. Got one of them big old, old plastic cups full of warm beer, you know, and a bunch of popcorn and cotton candy and everything. He's coming back to his seat, and wouldn't you know it, hey, Dave, good night, nurse. He just threw all that stuff right on the ground and looked up and said, my name is not Dave. <laughs> The preacher there at home was taking up a collection. We wanted a new sign at the Baptist church. We got it finally. It was a neon sign. I hadn't thought about this in ages, Ralph. We got us a neon sign there at the South Austin Baptist Church. It was neon blinked on and off and revived. You could see it for miles. It said, if you're tired of sin, come on in. Some old hussy wrote underneath with lipstick, if you're not, phone 443551. <laughs> Four, four, three. <laughs> and then, 
And then the preacher got mad. Oh, the preacher was beside himself. He got to preaching and quoting and perspiring and gesturing and everything. And a wave of emotion filled the entire church. And a lady in the balcony jumped up to shout. And she jumped a little high and fell over the balcony. And at the last second, she grabbed a chandelier. And here she is, Ralph, dangling high above the entire congregation on that chandelier, thrashing about. And the preacher said, the first man who looks up is going to get struck blind. And one little guy in the back said, I think I'll take a chance on my left eye. (laughs) They made it a lot easier in Texas for people to come up from Mexico and work, which we thought was pretty good. Well, it did. A lot of people got maids now named Maria. And um, a friend of ours was hunting. He was hunting uh, deer, and he called in to, to his house, and phone answered. Hello, he said, Maria. She said, see, means yes in Spanish. <laughs> and he said, let me talk to my wife. She said, I'm sorry, sir. She cannot come to the phone. And he said, what do you mean she can't come to the phone? I can't tell you. She said, you can't tell me. He said, you remember how I got you here? I'll send you right back. You get my wife to the phone right now. I said, she can't come to the phone. He said, why not? She said, She's in her bedroom. He said, well, go get her, bring her to the phone. The girl said, I can't. He said, why not? He said, she's with another man in there. <laughs> another man. The guy said, go get the shotgun, come back to the phone. Oh, I don't want to do it. He said, you want to go back to Mexico? No, go ahead. She come back, said, I got the shotgun. He said, okay, go in there, shoot them both, then come back to the phone. Oh, I can't do that. Go and shoot them both, come back to the phone. She comes back to the phone. Okay, sir, I got shot them both. He said, okay, take the shotgun, throw it in the swimming pool, then call the police, tell them we had a robbery. She said, we don't have a swimming pool. He said, is this four, four, three, seven? (laughs) (laughs) Wow! Pretty good. (laughs) So um, what it is... This guy, he is real, real sissy. You know what I mean? And he had the little lift when he talked. And he was going on a trip. And um, now he has a brother meaner than a junkyard dog. You know what I mean? So he goes up to the airline ticket and he said, hi. And he's got a cat on his shoulder. A Persian, I believe it was. Draped on his shoulder. And he says, hi, I'd like a ticket one for me and one for my little pussy cat. Well, the, the lady at the airline office said, we can't sell your cat a ticket. you got to put the cat in a box. We'll put it underneath. Oh, he said, we can never do that. I would never put my little pussy cat under there with all them suitcases and everything. So, he went home to his old brother, Meaner, and heck, and he said, I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. His brother said, what is it? He said, they won't sell my little pussy cat a ticket. And I'm going on this trip. Would you watch him for me while I'm away? Brother said, I'll watch your danged old cat for you. So the guy got on the plane. He got to the destination. First thing he did, he run to the phone booth. He called home. His brother said, hello. He said, hi. (laughs) Hi. My wife said I do this too well one day. (laughs) Hi. He said, hi, how is my little pussy cat doing? Brother said, your cat died. Oh! The guy said, you shouldn't have done it so abruptly. You should have said to me like, oh, last night your little pussy cat was up on the roof playing with this red rubber ball, and the ball fell off the roof, and your little pussy cat jumped to get the ball and fell and hurt himself and passed away during the night in the little pussy cat hospital. He said, by the way, how's mother? The brother said, well, she was up on the roof playing with this red rubber ball. (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me, I kind of like that myself. Sammy, (laughs) Sammy, the time has come. Ralph, I see that look in your eye. I can feel it. Time for the suit joke. The suit joke. You know what, son was wondering, can he tell it this time? 
Oh, I'm sorry, son, but nobody tells the suit joke like you do, Sammy. Thank you, Ralph. That's just <laughs> like you said you'd say it. I love it. Sammy, I want you to tell these people a story. <coughs> I guess it's about buying a suit, isn't it? Yeah, it what is. What I saw you do a long time ago. That's why I borrowed your jacket. You requested this joke. I want you to repeat something you did the first time you came to the show. What's that? And that's the suit routine. Would you do that for us? This is one of the fun. Now, I usually only do this every 10 years. Yeah, we did it on. on the Merv Griffin show, and then when you did Pop Go, you got, I am going to do it, yes. right? Okay. <laughs> All right. I like this, Ralph. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when son was a kid, his little imaginary friends wouldn't play with him. Hey, so. <laughs> there's, a, there's one routine that, that Sam and I have had this agreement where he only does it once a year. This year, I'm hey, asking. We're, we're I, not due till February. I know it. <laughs> but I've asked him to do the suit joke tonight. And, well, it ain't uh, a joke, you know. It's well, real. I, I, it's, it's, it's my favorite routine. All right. Uh, and you're my favorite, you're my new best, closest friend, Ralph. I'll tell you something. Yes, sir. Uh, there's, a, there's an extra camera around here somewhere from New Zealand, and I bet they've never seen this over there. Oh, that's why we're doing this tonight. For the neighbors from New Zealand, once a year we tell this joke, and uh, I feel maybe time is here tonight. Yes. <laughs> All right. It's a, we could play checkers. That went over real big. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we were out mingling around with the neighbors, you know, Ralph, before we, uh, before the show tonight. Met that little kid, you know, that smart aleck kid. A smart aleck kid? Oh, he comes up to me. He says, you Mr. Giesenslaw? I said, yes, I am. He said, you play the mandolin? I said, well, yes, I do. He said, I play the mandolin myself. I said, how long you been playing? He said, about a year and a half. And I said, do you play like I do? He said, I used to. <laughs> hey, I used to. But we were, uh... <clears throat> but I met a nice old guy, Ralph, 97 years old. No kidding. 97, did y'all see him? 97 years old. I said, how you feeling? He said, hi. I said, how you feeling? He said, oh. He said, I can't see but about 10 feet in front of my face. And he said, you know, my hands got so much arthritis in them, it makes it hard. He said, I can't lift my left leg. And when I had to kind of pick it up, it makes it hard with the arthritis. And I said, oh, gosh, that's awful. He said, oh, thank God I can still drive. <laughs> uh, if Ralph likes a joke, he likes a joke. And this, uh, this ain't exactly... A joke, it's a true story, isn't it? The first time when we came to Ralph's show, Pop Goes the Country, way back there a long time ago, ah, Pope came to Houston, you know. Pope came to Houston? Yeah, he's going to a convention. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, he's in the limousine. He's telling the driver, hurry up, hurry up, we're going to be late. The driver said, I'm afraid if I go any faster, I'll get in trouble. Pope said, you get in the back seat, I'll drive. So, uh... Pope's ripping along about 120 on the freeway. A policeman pulls him over, walks up there and said, just a minute, he goes back and radios headquarters. He said, I got a problem here. I just pulled somebody over and it's a big, big celebrity. And the guy at the police station said, who is it? And he said, I don't know, but he's got the Pope driving for him. <laughs> <laughs> but we went in the store, son said, I want to look good for TV. I want to buy a suit. And uh, they, they tried a few suits on him, and the clerk said, you know what, I believe we got you a perfect fit there. And son said, oh, thanks. And he started to shake the clerk's hand, and he said, well, I don't believe it's a perfect fit. He said, this sleeve seems to be a little bit too long. Well, the clerk said, that's no real problem. What you do, you pull that sleeve up to just about where you like it, and just hold it with your elbow. <laughs> wow! Well, he said, that looks good to me. So he started to pull his billfold out. Oh, good night, nurse. He said, I just noticed this other sleeve seems to be a bit lengthy, too. The clerk said, it's the same process. You get it up there to where you like it, hold it with your other elbow. Oh, well, he said, that does feel a whole lot better. And, uh... Goodness gracious, son said, would you looky here? I believe this right pants leg seems to be too long. The clerk said, what you do, you pull it up to the desired length and hold it with your other elbow. Well, son said, Mr. Clerk, 
I would be the last person in America to start trouble, but I just noticed this other pen. Son said, let me guess. Do I just pull it up to where I want it and hold it with my elbow? And the clerk said, that's exactly right. So we pay for the suit. We're walking down the street. And we meet two old ladies. And one of the old ladies says to the other one, Ooh, look at the shape that poor boy's in. And the other said, yeah, but don't his suit fit nice? <laughs> oh, I love the suit joke. Ah, oh, thank you, Ralph. Thank you, thank you. Sammy, you guys have really done well. Well, thank, thanks to you, Ralph, we have at least been, uh, been active, been on the world tour. But you know, Sam, this video wouldn't be complete without your biggest hit. Oh, you know, yeah, I know what you mean. Maybe we'll let Son introduce this. Okay. <laughs> Well, maybe I'll introduce it. Help, I'm white and I can't get down. Don't sit at home and miss all the fun. Order now to learn all the latest country dances. Yes, you can dance if you order today. No COD. My woman told me last Friday night that her birthday's coming and things ain't right. Well, we've been together since before the war and I never had her out on a dance hall floor. I didn't know what to say. I never learned to dance, only learned to play and to watch other people do their thing. My job was to pick and sing. Well, I moped around the house. I watched late TV and slept on the couch. I flipped through the dial and after a while, a commercial came on that made me smile. Said, learn to dance, learn the moves. Called 1900, you just can't lose. Well, it didn't take me long. I jumped right up and I ran to the phone. The operator asked, can I help you, sir? And this is what I said to her. Help, I'm white and I can't get down. Got two left feet planted on the ground. I need some help if I do town. Help, I'm wild and I can't get I took the course and I learned quick Just one week it did the trick So when that magic evening came I knew I wouldn't be ashamed The floor was crowded but something was wrong I didn't recognize the songs These cowboys ain't on my videotape I wonder if there's been some mistake I tried some moves, I spun around Knocked a whole lot of dancers down I kept my cool Had to be vogue till they kicked my head in a cotton eye joke I laid there a while and held my face My woman went screaming from the place I crawled out the back door I didn't want no more I've had enough I'm going home and make one more call on the telephone And when they answer on the other end This is what I'll say again Help, I'm wild and I can't get down I got two left feet planted on the ground I need some help if I do the time Help, I'm wild and I can't get down Learn to dance today. To obtain more information about Step One Records products or to order more tapes, contact Step One Records, 1300 Division Street, Suite 304, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203, or call 1-800-264-2054.